Hey everybody, welcome to what's going to be another great Dev Intel. If you didn't know, Dev Intel is a 30 minute window for members of the DAO to showcase something they're passionate about or have been working on. This could be an awesome project you've been working on, demonstrating unit testing best practices, automation goodies, smart contracts, how how to structure a project, etc. Basically, if, you have, if you've got a passion for something, this is your opportunity to share it with the community. And today I'm happy to introduce to you Yaman. Uh, who is actually a member of the Luxo network and he's going to give us an overview. Uh, take it away, Yemen. Thanks, Narb. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Yeah, uh, I'm going to start by giving you a quick introduction about myself. So, my name is Yemen Mirai. I'm a smart contract engineer at Luxo. Uh, I have been into the blockchain space since almost 2019 and uh, together with Jean Cavallera. Uh, we're uh, improving, we improved the ERC-725 standard and we're building what we call Luxo standard proposals. And uh, in this presentation, I'm going to uh, give you a, an explanation of few of the standards as well as a quick overview of uh, Luxo. But before starting, I, I, like, I would like to mention the hackathon. So we announced a six-week virtual hackathon. It's about building around the Luxo ecosystem, utilizing uh, the standards that we created, as well as our developer tools and library. It's going to start after five days, so from 20 July to 31 August. The total prize pool is $500,000 in Lux. It's going to be distributed on five categories. So you can build around universal profiles, social endows, multiverse and gaming, fashion, art, music, and entertainment. And there's a blue sky category where you can build whatever you want. But absolutely, you should build utilizing our standards and tool. So if you want to know more information about the hackathon, you can go to luxo.network slash hackathon and you can join our Discord server where we, where we have a developer resources. And if you don't have any teammates, you can uh, send, send a message on this chat and you can team with other uh, Discord members. Okay, going back to who founded Luxo. So Luxo was founded by Fabian Fokusteller and Marjorie Hernandez. Fabian was part of the Ethereum Foundation. He was the lead the app developer there. He also authored the ERC20 token standard, the famous token standard that we're all familiar with. And uh, he initially wrote Web3.js, the most used library to interact with uh, smart contracts on the blockchain. We have also Marjorie Hernandez. She is the co-founder of the Dematerialized, the Web3 fashion marketplace for authenticated and virtual goods. So Luxo will be an EVM compatible network. It will be running ETH 2.0 as consensus. It will have a very similar setup to Ethereum in terms of the Prism Beacon node and the Geth clients. And uh, currently we are running the L16 public testnet. And the next step for uh, our network team is the mainnet. So now you're thinking it's, a, it's another blockchain. It's just a similar blockchain. Why we need one? Why not just sticking with one blockchain? So it's a valid question, but it has two answers. The first one is scalability problems. So due to the current scalability problems that blockchain have, we can't really just use one blockchain. Otherwise, we will end up with really high gas fees and, uh, and the congested chain. And the second reason is community. So we believe that each blockchain define its own community. So if we're talking about the Ethereum network, we will be probably thinking of like more DeFi use cases with limiting interaction because of the high fees. And if we're thinking about Luxo, we will be uh, talking about much more creative ideas such as digital identity and digital fashion, social media and digital lifestyle. So at the end, they are both EVM chains. What could be built on Luxo can be built on Ethereum and the opposite is right, but it's just about picking the right standards and tools. So the aim of Luxo is really to simplify and improve the blockchain user experience because uh, currently it's so hard. You need to download MetaMask. It's hard for non-technical people. Uh, it's like you need to download MetaMask. You need to uh, write these 12 words on a paper and hide this paper. You need to understand concepts like gas, uh, 
you need to deal with failing transaction. And all of this will not make sense for non-technical user. And we need to abstract all of this. And we believe that blockchain should be as simple as a click of a button or like having an application that talk with the blockchain in the back end. So we really need to uh, abstract all of these complex idea and abstracting is not deleting like we, we cannot remove the concept of gas or transactions. We need to abstract it from the user. So an example would be instead of uh, having the users under, understand what's gas, we can have what we call relay services where the user subscribe to this relay service for like $10 a month and it can execute all of his transaction without him knowing what's gas or like what's gas limit or gas price. So how we're planning to abstract all of this complexity is through the Luxus standard proposals and the tools that we've been creating. So on the screen, you can see the first 10 LSPs and the browser extension, as well as some developer tools like ERC 75 JS and LSP factory. So I'm going to start with explaining a uh, few standards, then going through the browser extension. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is the problem of externally owned account and, ID and identity. So uh, on, uh, on the blockchain, we have a private key that control our address. I took my address as an example. So I own two NFTs. It's the developer DAO NFT and the ENS domain name. And what happens if my private key is gone, all of this will be gone. And this is not the, the like the ideal security that we're aiming for. And this could be easily solved with smart contract based account. So with smart contract based account, we can have more security and we can at the same time build our identity on chain. So one, one uh, standard that uh, formed the basis for the smart contract based account is ERC 725. So using ERC-725, it can be owned by a normal external owned account, or it could be owned by another custom contract that like maybe needs uh, two signature in order to execute. Really like you can, you can have the owner as whatever contract you want uh, and whatever security you can implement. And you can uh, perform operations such as call, create, create to, static call, and delegate call. So it's more operation than the externally owned account provide. And it's formed from ERC 725Y, where you can attach unlimited information to the smart contract. So here we can see on the left uh, a normal smart contract where we have hard coded variables such as my name and my age. And once this contract is deployed on the network, we can't really add more variables. Like we can change the content by having setter functions, but we can't add more. Uh, and in the ERC-725 contract, we have a mapping of bytes32 data key uh, mapped to bytes data value. So using this mapping, we can add like a huge number of bytes32 data key and we can attach uh, bytes uh, data value to it. So it would be just two function set data that takes as an argument the data key and the data value. So the data key would be the variable name, like my name, and the data value is the content of this variable, which is Yaman in this case. And once this function is executed, you, you will have uh, these uh, these data stored inside the smart contract, and you can go on and store like hundreds and millions of entries. Uh, and the get data function help you retrieve the information that you stored. So it takes as an argument the data key and you can provide the my name and it will return you the content of the data key. So this is ERC 725. Why? We think that ERC 725 Y will be mainly used in the future because it could be used by normal smart contracts. Uh, it could be used by token and NFT. So instead of having uh, a token URI function, we can add unlimited uh, information to the asset. Also, uh, it could be used with profiles. So uh, you, you can have a smart contract where it represents your profile and you can attach whatever information you want. But this, like using ERC-725Y alone, 
will uh, introduce a uh, will introduce a problem that I'm going to explain with an example. So let's say we have this data key, bytes32 data key, which is the hash of the word my variable, and we have as data value these bunch of bytes. So the problem is that these bunch of bytes can be interpreted and decoded as string, and they will mean the word Yaman. But if they are decoded as number, they will mean this uh, huge decimal number. So now we have a problem of users and website uh, to know how they should decode this data. So that's why we proposed another standard as part of the LSPs, and it's ERC-725Y JSON schema, where it's uh, just a schema that you pass to interfaces and users, and it could uh tell you how to handle this data so it's the same example we see that the value type and the value content is string so now we know we should go with the first one and not the second one and using this standard we can also write other stuff to the storage other than the singleton so you could also write arrays and mapping and mapping with grouping which is the nested mapping so on the right you can see how they are constructed as bytes 32 data keys so having them as bytes 32 data keys may be uh, like a little bit hard for uh, for application to implement because they need to construct uh, custom keys and they need to decode the data value depending on the value type and the value content. That's why the team has created ERC-725JS and it's very simple. You just pass the schema to the ERC-725 instance and you initiate it with uh, the schema, the contract address that you want to retrieve information from, the provider, uh, the, the network, and other custom configuration that you can specify. And it's as simple as querying the name of the key, and it will return you the, the, the data value decoded, already decoded, depending on the value content and the value type. So it's really easy and straightforward. Uh, for the second topic, we're going to talk about the smart contract interaction, a problem that we have in the smart contract interaction, and it's uh, informing. So there is no standard way of informing other smart contracts about some information, or even um, a smart contract informing other smart contract about some interaction. And I like to give this example that I found online on LinkedIn. It's an article where someone has created a token on the Ethereum mainnet. And it's basically, if you take the token address and import it in MetaMask, you will see that you own 100 debts. So every address on the main on the Ethereum mainnet now uh, own 100 debts of token. So it, it's a really like it's a dummy example but it really served my idea of not being aware of token transfers and i'm going to explain the token nft contract design so the the erc20 token contracts act like a registry contract so it just track the so it just track the balance of addresses so let's say you want to transfer a token from uh, the sender so the sender will call the transfer function and this transfer function will just decrease the balance of the sender and it will increase the balance of the recipient. The recipient will stay completely out of this interaction and it will not know about the transfer. And it's the same in uh, like tokens in the ERC721 contract. It's just a registry contract that track the ownership of a token ID. So when the sender wants to transfer, it's called the transfer function. And what it does is just uh, removing the ownership from the sender and passing it to the recipient. And also the recipient is completely outside this interaction. So this, like, uh, the recipient can't know about the transfer because it's a new way. And if it's a smart contract, there is no standard and unified function that all smart contracts implement and we can call to notify about the transfer. So that's why we proposed LSP1 universal receiver standard, uh, where we have a unified function called universal receiver that all smart contracts can implement. And when you want to make the contract not uh, notified about some uh, information or, or some transaction, 
you can just uh, call the function with some data and it's going to emit an event to the network with the data passed to it. So I like to give examples about tokens since it's the mostly used in the blockchain space. So if Alice wants to transfer some tokens to Bob, as well as updating the balance, the token contract will inform the sender and the recipient about this transfer through calling the universal receiver function on both the sender and the recipient contract. So this is the universal receiver standard. It has some something called the universal receiver delegate, which is an extension to the standard where you can uh, have a, write a custom logic to a contract that you deploy on the network. And then you can attach this address of the contract on the universal receiver function as the owner of this smart contract. And what will happen is whenever someone call this universal receiver function this universal receiver function will forward the call to the universal receiver delegate and it will run the logic inside it so also we're gonna give an example for a token transfer let's say alice wants to transfer a token uh, to bob uh, the token contract will inform the sender and the recipient through the universal receiver function and now bob have uh, has a universal receiver delegate that he linked to the universal receiver. So now every logic that is here uh, will be run in the same transaction. So Bob could have any logic he wants to implement. He could have a logic where he can revert on all token received. So this transfer will not go through and he will revert on the token transfer. And this pattern is actually useful for people who have influence in the Web3 space like Vitalik. We often see th this like silly marketing trick that uh, tokens and protocol play, which is like sending a bunch of tokens to the address of Vitalik. And then they say, oh, look, Vitalik owns some tokens. And then they start hyping the community about it. And then Vitalik needs to follow up this transfer by either uh, burning the tokens or selling them. And this could result in dumping some projects or dumping the market. While this could be easily avoided if like Vitalik at first didn't accept the token transfer by having a universal receiver delegate uh, that revert on all token received. And if you don't want to revert on all token received, you can have uh, a logic where you can only accept verified tokens. So you could have this universal receiver delegate that reads from the from a registry contract of verified tokens and only accept verified tokens. And you can even go more complex logic and have a logic where you automatically sell the token received th through a decentralized exchange. So really, you can like build whatever you want with the universal receiver delegate. And it's not just relate, related to the uh, tokens and NFT. The, the universal receiver function could be uh, implemented in any smart contract. Can we uh, ask questions during the presentation or do you want to? Uh, yeah, we can ask questions, but like due to the lack of time, I g if we can leave the question for the end, it would be oh, really sure. helpful. Like I like to do such presentation in an informal way and take question while we do this presentation. But since since we have only thirty minutes, I will leave the question for the end. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, thank you. So now we have what we call the LSP zero ERC seven two five account, and it's basically a combination between the LSP one universal receiver, the ERC seven two five X, the ERC seven two five Y and ERC-165 and ERC-1271. So you're, you should be all familiar with ERC-1271 and ERC-165. So it's for interface detection here and for signature validation. So the LSP0 ERC-725 account is the account that we should use on the blockchain to operate instead of uh, the external owned account. And since we have a contract storage that we can attach any information to it, it makes sense to have to have a data key where we can store in, uh, a JSON URL that link to our name and our description uh, and maybe an avatar or a profile image and the background image. So you can see here, uh, if you go to universalprofile.cloud, all of these profiles are ERC-725 accounts contract. 
and these pictures and name are fetched directly from a from the smart contract itself they are not stored uh, like on a centralized server or fetched from a centralized server they are directly fetched from inside the smart contract in a full decentralized way so the combination so we standardize this data key and this standard which we call lsp3 universal profile metadata it's just a standard where we standardize a bunch of keys like the lsp3 profile uh, and the combination between lsp0 erc725 account which is a smart contract and the lsp3 universal profile metadata which is just a bunch of data keys form what we call universal profiles and basically universal profiles uh, are what we can replace like they can replace our web2 uh, profiles and we can do whatever we want with them so basically we can interact with any smart contract we can send money and native tokens to other addresses we can own assets on this universal profile and be notified about them we can link a, a social recovery contract to the universal profile, we can link a password recovery and even a key manager that may make different people execute through our universal profile based on different permissions. And if your if your uh, universal profile is representing a DAO, you can have a voting contract that's sent in front of it and just like have people vote on certain proposals and then it could be executed through the universal profile. And since we mentioned the key manager, uh, I'll, uh, I want to explain the LSP6. I guess it's the last standard that I'm going to explain. And basically, it's a smart contract that will, uh, that will be the owner of the LSP0 ERC725 account. And it will make several devices or addresses execute through our universal profile. So the, uh, yeah. And since we have a contract storage, and since the LSP0 ERC725 account implement the ERC725Y where we can attach any information to the universal profile, it makes sense to store the permission of the users inside the universal profile. So here we can see the permission of Alice, she has all the permissions, and Bob, he, ha he has the permission to set data. So storing the permissions inside the universal profile is useful for one reason. So let's say we have a key manager that have the feature A and we want to upgrade to a key manager that have feature A and feature B. We can simply just execute a transfer ownership uh, from this key manager to another key manager and we don't need to reset every permissions because they are already stored inside the uh, smart contract the universal profile and the key manager will read from the universal profile and nothing will be changed so i i would like to give an example uh, for the dao so let's say we have a universal profile for the dao and it's uh, owned by a key manager and in the universal profile we have different permissions so let's say narb has a permission to set data and also a social media manager has a permission to set data the voting contract where all the members of the DAO can vote has the permission of execute. A social recovery is linked uh, to change the owner. And uh, another is uh, have the permission to deploy. So we're going to start with having NARB executing through the key manager. So if NARB try to execute, the transaction will revert and will not go through because he has only the permission to set data. And now if you try to set data, the transaction will go through because it's his permission. And it's the same for the social media manager and uh, for the execute, it's the same. Uh, if the voting contract is executing through the profile, it's going to pass since uh, it has the permission to execute. But if Nader try to uh, change the owner and he have the permission to deploy, it's also it's going to be reverted. Uh, since he has not the permission to change on that. So we have all these permissions that organize what people can do, like it organize which task uh, the users should have. So NARP will probably uh, like uh, set data on the universal profile, the links of the recording of the Devantel sessions. But this like 
having this permission is very generic. So we introduced a more specific restrictions and it's based on uh, data keys. So now having having uh, NARB uh, setting data, he can he have the permission to set data so he can uh, change almost every key that is uh, here in the storage. And this is somehow bad because like NARB can uh, change the data key responsible of the profile image. Like NARB will not do it, but like we should we should take our uh, yeah we should take uh, some uh, organize uh, like we should organize how it's done. So now if NARB tried to set data uh, to change the profile picture, he will be able to because he can he can change change any data key. So we, we came up with what we call allowed ERC 725Y keys, and it's a restriction where we can say that NARB here have the permission to set data, but he has the, the permission only to change the Devantel keys. So now if he tries to change the, uh, the, key, the key responsible uh, of the profile image, the transaction will be reverted and will not go through. And if he uh, and it's the same for the social media manager. If he tried to set uh, to set data and change the Devantel keys, the Devantel recordings, it will uh, revert because it's not his allowed ERC seven two five Y key. And we have similar restrictions such as allowed addresses and allowed functions and allowed standards. So here we have a, a person that have the permission to execute through the key manager. And he's only allowed to talk to three addresses. So this and this and this. And he, if he tries to talk to another smart contract that is not uh, that is not here in the allowed addresses, it's going to revert and it's not going to go through. So also the allowed st addresses and the allowed ERC 725Y keys are stored inside the ERC 725 account. So everything is stored inside the, the universal profile or the ERC-725 account. And the key manager just read and filter uh, if he's allowed or not based on these permissions stored inside the uh, ERC-725 account. So it's, it's the same for allowed standards. So let's say this caller has only the, uh, the standard be allowed. He can talk to smart contracts that implement the interface B and if he talked to another smart contract that don't implement the interface B, it's going to revert. So now we, we have what we call relay execution also in the key manager. So we see here that the caller initiated the, the transaction. So now he's paying for the gas fee of all this interaction. But here, we have what we call relay execution and basically what he, the user A can do since he had since he have permissions, he can sign the transaction, he can sign the payload of executing and pass it to a relay service where this relay service can initiate the call and pa uh, pay for the gas fee. And when when the key manager uh, get the signature, it's going to recover the address of the user A and check if the user A will have permissions. So it's not related to the relay service. The relay service will just initiate the transaction and it will pay for the gas fee. So this could be done if the user doesn't want to pay for the gas fee or he don't have like native coins to, to pay for the gas fee. And he could agree with the relay service for a specific payment method, so maybe in fiat. And you could have such relay service that give you credits and will allow you to execute without gas if you like watch some sort of uh, ads. So basically you can build anything you want around the universal profile and the key manager. So now we will go through what we call token NFT 2.0. I will not have time to explain all of this, but I will just give you a few ideas. So they use ERC 725Y for the metadata. So instead of having the just the token URI linked, they uh, will have the ERC 725Y metadata. Then you can store the images, a 3D avatar, a JSON. You can store also the creators and the token name. And basically, you can notify the sender and the recipient about the transfer. You can have safer transfer check with the force boolean. 
you can use bytes 32 for token id in the lsp8 contract so uh, the the erc721 use uh, numbers as token id but the lsp8 contract uses bytes 32 as token id and it can represent numbers it can represent hashed value as serial number of a, like a product and it can represent addresses so each token id can be its own address and what's cooler is that each token id can be a smart contract that implement erc 725y storage so now if you have a game that will update the characters the appearance of the characters it's as simple as updating the storage of each token id and it will not be directly related to the lsp8 they can do it directly on the token id or from this from the lsp8 uh, contract if the token id are owned by the contract so now i'm i guess i have almost finished i'm going to show you the browser extension so this is the browser extension you can create a profile you can have a password you can pick your identicon you can uh, keep the profile anonymous or add some profile information so i will add my profile photo so it's uh, i will choose vitalik uh, i will enter the username test of vitalik and then i will save and you can see we're creating the profile it's it's a it's a normal transaction so all of these pictures will be stored on chain that's why we need to wait because it's a normal transaction now the profile is being created and i'm gonna show you that we need to wait probably till it's uh till it's done Yeah, once once it's done. So I'm gonna so just to finalize this to know more about the LSPs, you can go to docs.luxo.tech and there's a specific page for each standard where it's explained. And also if you want to download the browser extension, you go to docs.luxo.tech. On the guides section, there's a guide on how to install the browser extension. And if you have any questions, just feel free to uh, enter the Discord server and ask the question on the development channels. We are always responding on these channels. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope all of what I explained makes sense, and I'm ready to answer all of your questions. So now we see that the profile data has been changed. And we see that it's just setting data on the profile. So we're setting the data on the profile. And you see here that it's executed through a relayer because I don't have uh, licks. So it's executed through the Luxo relayer. You can download it and play with it as you want. So this browser extension, you can whitelist data key, you can execute. So it's fully, it's fully functional. We're still adding features and we plan to simplify the, the user experience so it can be used by non-technical people. So it's probably have more like simple terms and like it's still in early stages, but it's fully functional. You can create a universal profile with it. Yeah, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, I'm ready to answer all of your questions yeah well done well done i mean this is really cool uh can't wait to start playing with this on my own um gang uh is there any questions we can take a few minutes here uh to answer anything you may have for yaman yeah i have uh, i have a question so two universal profiles and to each other it's it's possible to refer the transaction that you don't want to accept does it mean that the transaction keeps on uh, staying like pending until someone accepts your transaction so basically let me reshare my screen and explain it uh so we know we we like the using the blockchain we can't really keep something pending it, it it will be directly executed so if we go here to the tokens so if we have this uh this universal receiver delegate that revert on the token received it's already deployed on the network so uh, when alice want to transfer the token to bob 
it will call the transfer function. The, the transfer function will inform the universal receiver of Alice. Alice don't have a universal receiver delegate, so the transfer will go through. And then the token contract will inform the universal receiver of Bob. This universal receiver function will call the universal receiver delegate. And in this universal receiver delegate, you will have a logic. So this logic is already uh, written in the contract and this contract is already deployed. So all of this will happen in the same transaction. So it will go here and it will read that this contract will have a revert line and all of this will be reverted. So it's yeah. not waiting for another transaction. It's in the same transaction. Yeah, I understand. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying. Awesome. Cool. Any other question? I'm sure. I'm sure folks folks will probably have more questions as uh, the gears start turning and they uh, get new ideas for new stuff to to build. But um, seeing where we are with time uh, and purpose of the recording, I think maybe we'll call it here. But um, everyone is welcome to stay after the fact uh, to to ask any further questions or whatnot. Um, so with that, uh, thank you very much, Yaman, for coming on and uh, giving us this awesome overview. And uh, I want to wish everybody a very happy Friday or weekend, wherever wherever you may be. And um, we're trying something new today. Uh, so uh, developer DAO's very own uh, uh, kudos. Uh, we're going to be actually uh, giving kudos today instead of POAPs. Uh, so I'll be dropping a link uh, that everybody can use to claim a uh, kudos from Mint Kudos. And uh, Yaman, I'll also send you your uh, a special link for your uh, speaker kudos. Um, so with that, uh, I will stop the recording and I wish everybody a awesome, awesome uh, rest of your day.